You want to know some of the biggest dark horses in the Big Ten this year? Then let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name's Josiah, and welcome to another Big Ten Tuesday topic right here on the Fanco Wrestling channel. And this week is a very special video because we're looking at every single Big Ten team, something we don't always do here on the Fanco Wrestling channel. But this week, we're giving the love to some of those schools that don't always get it, like Indiana or Maryland or even Illinois. And I'm going to tell you a dark horse from every single team. So what exactly is a dark horse? Just for your understanding, Understanding and my understanding, so we are on the same page. A dark horse is somebody who is maybe typically overlooked, uh, maybe forgotten about from last season, or just because they're ranked low, or even unranked, or just because people don't really know their name because they don't get a lot of media attention, or it could just be because they didn't wrestle last season due to an injury or an Olympic redshirt or something along those lines. So I, then I actually looked at the di di uh, dictionary definition for this, which is a usually a little known contender, such as a racehorse, <laughs> that makes an unexpectedly good showing. So we're looking at the wrestlers who make good showings. And that brings us to the first person here on this list with Michigan, which is Jelani Embry. Now, Embry is somebody who is a top 20 ranked wrestler at 184 pounds right now in the preseason uh, at Michigan. We could actually see him bump up to 197, and I think he actually stands a better shot if he bumps up to 197 because that is such a wide open weight where really any it's anybody's game. I, I happen to believe that 184 is another weight that's anybody's game right now, but 197 is another one of those weights. Now, Embry is actually a national qualifier. He withdrew from the Big Ten Championships last year due to an injury which was unfortunate but he had a pretty good season overall he placed at the cliff Keen las vegas tournament and coming into this upcoming season he will be a junior i think he's somebody who you should be on the lookout for he's somebody who may be able to bump into that top 10 and get an all-american spot and that brings us to another Michigan team, which is Michigan State. And at Michigan State, this is somebody who maybe you don't necessarily consider him a dark horse. I do, and that's Ravon Foley. And I consider him a dark horse, even though he's a top five ranked guy in the country right now in the preseason by Flow Wrestling. Actually, I believe he's the highest ranked guy on the list at number four right now. Out of all the guys on the list, he's the highest ranked. Um, he is a former All-American, but the reason I'm putting him on this list is I think a lot of people tend to have forgotten about Ravon Foley due to his uh, injury last season. He was out for the season, and so he didn't wrestle, uh, and I think that people just forgot about him. He is somebody who, like I said, he has All-American, and he has had some incredible matches in the past, including wins over uh, Ronnie Bresser, over Russell, over over Petrowski. Um, I think he's going to have a tough time with Vito Arrugia and Spencer Lee, but you never know. If he can pull off something crazy there, I mean, that will really push him into the limelight. And I think he's going to get some of those matches this year that really push him into the limelight. Now, Michigan State also has Cam Caffey, and I, I struggled with, you know, Ravon and Caffey. I think uh, between the two, Ravon is a little bit more unknown compared to, you know, Caffey had last season where he made such big jumps and had some such an incredible season. So that's why I have him for Michigan State. But as far as for Rutgers, this is a ranked or an unranked wrestler, excuse me, at 149 pounds, and that's Ryan Vulak. He's incoming this year as a top recruit at 152 pounds and a top recruit by Flow Wrestling. Now, he is a PIAA, a AA state champion, so he's somebody to look out for, especially considering the fact that he's a Pennsylvania wrestler wrestling in, at Rutgers, which isn't something that always happens. Now, Rutgers has a lot of big name guys, of course, with uh, Sir, Nick Suriano, with uh, Sebastian Rivera now, and so yeah, those are big guys, but they aren't necessarily dark horses. Volok is somebody who may be able to climb the ranks this upcoming season. He is a Super 32 placer, a Beast of the East power Powerade and escape the rock champion. Uh, the question is, will he start in his upcoming freshman year? Maybe he will, maybe he won't, depending on you know where he even the, see the season go. But I think Volok is somebody who can climb the ranks uh, and, and at least become a ranked wrestler in this upcoming season, uh, to say the very least. And that moves us on to Indiana. And this is a wrestler at number 15 in the country is Brock Hudkins. Hudkins uh, actually made the round of 12 in his freshman season. 
So he made the blood round in his freshman season. I uh, injured last year. So again, some people may have forgot about him because of that. And he's actually transferred from Northern Illinois. So now that he's come in and he's actually had a season, I believe, under his belt uh, at Indiana. But now that he's actually at Indiana, even though you know, he was injured. Uh, I think with this, even some different Big Ten training, some different training under his belt, I think Hudkins is somebody who can start to climb the ranks. Now, again, it's at 125, and there's some, I mean, there's some guys fleeing 125. There's some guys staying down at 125. But I think Hudkins is somebody at Indiana who is definitely a dark horse. And speaking of another guy, another dark horse, uh, this is somebody who we talked about in a recent uh, Big Ten Tuesday video in the Maryland video, is Philip Spadafora. Now, Spadafora is a top 25 ranked wrestler at 174 pounds. He is a national qualifier, and unfortunately, he didn't necessarily have a great Big Ten championships. Uh, a lot of Maryland didn't necessarily have great Big Ten championships. However, he had a pretty solid rest of his season. He was 17 and 16, which is one of the best records on his team. Uh, considering the Maryland and, you know, the, they've struggled as a team the last few you know, five, six, seven years. But as far as Spadafora has been on it, they've been struggling as a team, but have been uh, drastically kind of increasing. And I think that you're going to continue to see with the new head coach from last year, I think you're going to continue to see greater improvements. And I think Spadafora is somebody entering his junior year who's going to be able to make those uh, improvements. And especially since he was, you know, some of his losses were to seniors like Mark Hall and Dylan Lighty, who both of those guys are gone now. So I think Spadafora can uh, do some good things for his team and you know make it more of a name for Maryland and these next two schools because we're doing the Big Ten East first sorry I did not mention that yet we're doing the Big Ten East first and then halfway through we're going to be switching to the Big Ten West so the we have two more teams on the Big Ten East and the first is Ohio State and this guy right here that I'm showing is Carson Karchla, an incoming freshman who had a phenomenal redshirt season. He was 16-0, and undefeated in his redshirt season. Now, he is a multiple-time Ohio State champion, and uh, he is actually an Ironman champ and a Fargo champ. So, because of that, I mean, Kar Karchla, he's already proven himself a, a bit in college because he is 16-0. and He is ranked at 165 pounds right now, whether you, know, whether you think he deserves a ranking or or not considering he's an incoming freshman, uh, I think he's somebody who does deserve a ranking. I think you're going to see some great things out of at 165 pounds. Now that you know maybe Mikhail Lewis is coming back in and Marinelli's still there, but Vincenzo Joseph's out of the scene. So you know there, there's a little bit of a shakeup up top, and I think that Carcel is somebody who you can look out for. Also at Ohio State, you're going to want to be on the lookout. And I had a tough time deciding who to put on this list. It was Anthony Echemendi as well as Chase Singletary, who's dropping down to 197. Uh, and I think you could see some good things out of those two guys as well. But as far as for Ohio State, I'm giving it to Carcel as the dark horse. Now Penn State is another team that will be similar to Iowa in that um, they have a lot of good wrestlers, and you know they also have a lot of guys because they have so much media attention on them all the time from flow from intermat from track from all these different news sites uh from fanco wrestling uh you're going to see a lot of these names often but one name that i think that maybe kind of slips out of the limelight a little bit is carter starachi starachi is another guy just like uh Karchler, who had an undefeated red shirt season he was 19 and 0 this season he's also a uh multiple times state champion although he is from Pennsylvania so multiple time PIAA state champ he's also a Powerade champion um, and he's is, right now he's actually ranked top 10 in the country he's somebody who I know there's a lot of um, controversy about whether he should be ranked or not I think he can step it up and be a great improvement for Mark Hall and just like we've seen these Penn State wrestlers step up in the past and do great things and uh, just prove themselves in the limelight, I think Sirachi is going to be somebody who's able to do that this year for Penn State. And that moves us into the Big Ten West. And at this moment in this video, if you are, are enjoying it, I want to invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure that you turn all notifications on so that you're updated on the latest going on in the Fanco Wrestling video. So, that brings us again to the next video in the big or the next topic in the Big Ten West, which is Nebraska. The next team here, I'm going to be talking about Peyton Robb as the dark horse. And he is a dark horse because although he 
I, I think he really showed up at the end of last season. I think that's the real big reason that I have him as a dark horse. He didn't necessarily get his chance to shine at NCAAs because the tournament was canceled. I know we have to say that again and again, which sucks, but he did place third at the Big Ten Championships. He defeated Caleb Young in the quarterfinals, which was a big win for him. Ended up losing in the semis the next round, but he did have a big win in the quarters. So he ended up qualifying for the national championships, and he's only heading into his sophomore year at 157 pounds. And although there are some tough guys at the top at 157 with Deacon, with Hidley, with Carr, I think Rob is somebody who, you know, with his Big Ten schedule, is going to be able to really project and move up a couple of ranks and get into that potential All American status. I think he has the uh, potential to do that. And as we move on to Wisconsin, we move up a couple of weights at 184 pounds, where Chris Weiler is ranked as the top 15 ranked wrestler in the country right now. Now, Weiler, although you see him here in the Lehigh singlet, that's because he is a transfer from Lehigh, but he is a national qualifier. Now, he's somebody who made the round of 12 in the past, so he made the blood round, so he was just close enough to becoming an All-American, just not quite there yet. He had a loss last year at EIWAs to Louis Dupre, who he actually beat earlier on in the season. Dupre is a great standout from last season. It really uh, came up in, in the ranks and, and showed that he was a great wrestler last season. And I think that Weiler, somebody with some different coaches, some different guys in the training room, some different uh, training that he's going to go through, Weiler, somebody who maybe would step it up and really shine at 184 pounds, where there's a lot of guys and a lot of a lot of recognition to be had at 184. And that moves us to Illinois. And originally, I was making this video, I was going to just put like five dark horses. I decided to expand it, but Mikey Carr is one of my favorite dark horses for this upcoming season. He is a wrestler at Illinois. Illinois, a top 10 ranked wrestler at 149 pounds right now. He has made national made the national championships a couple of years now, uh, including making the round of 12 and the round of 16. He's had consistently solid records, 20 and 7, 14 and 7 records. His only, uh, unfortunately, last season he was injured, so that kind of plagued him. It was unfortunate for him to have been injured. He, in looking at some of his other losses, uh, he had some very, very close matches with some guys like Max Murin, who lost to. Uh, four to three. He had a win and a loss with Chad Red. So he's back and forth with him, who is a. Each of these guys are top guys. Of course, you know, Murin is somebody who uh, bumping up and down. We'll see wherever he goes. But then we have also, uh, speaking of another Iowa Hawkeye, is Jaden Ironman, who. Uh, Mikey Carr first match with him was 12 to 10. It was a loss in the dual meet with Missouri, as well as he had a five to two loss at Cliff King, Las Vegas. I know it's not phenomenal to talk about losses, but I'm just telling you that he's somebody who's right there. He's right there with a couple of these guys. And if he can make some of those adjustments, I think you're going to see him make a big jump this year. Even though he is already ranked number eight in the country at 149, he's going to uh, show up this upcoming season. And we move on to Minnesota. Now, Minnesota, we have some great guys at Minnesota, including Gable Steveson, of course, is the big headliner here. But who else do we have on the team? And right here, we have the number 18 ranked in the country at 184 is Owen Webster. Now, I've said it already in this video, but 184 is a weight that can really be anybody's game. Webster went from, and this is, I think, the great part about Webster, because I... Minnesota was a tough one to decide who I wanted to be the dark, who I thought would be a great dark horse on the team. So he's somebody who just had a great year last year. Went from seven and nine the previous year to twenty two and twelve. So a big, big jump. Now he did lose to Aaron Brooks in the Big Ten quarters, but he ended up getting a couple more wins, even though he had a couple losses. He ended up finishing eleventh and qualifying for the national championship. So not necessarily a phenomenal Big Ten tournament, but he was able to get some wins there, some good wins under his belt. He also had wins last season to Cash Wilkie and to Rocky Jordan of Ohio State, as well as a sudden victory with Johnny Sebastian. So I think that Owen uh, Webster is somebody who can be a pretty good dark horse. If you're looking out for somebody on Minnesota, I think that this is the guy to be looking out for. And as we move on to Northwestern, that brings us to a top six ranked guy in the country in Lucas Davison. Lucas Davison at 197 pounds. Again, I think it's a good weight to be at this year because it's, it's anybody's game. Now, he placed fifth at the Big Ten Championships last year with a loss to Jacob Warner and Colin Moore. Colin Moore... Uh, 
is somebody who I think he was just he was just better than him. And Davidson wasn't going to be able to really I don't know if he'd ever really be able to ever beat Colin Moore. And so it's kind of good that he's out of he's graduated now and he's out of Davidson's way. With that out of the way, I think that Davidson's still going to have some struggles with Jacob Warner. But I think if he's he's able to beat some of these other guys at 197 pounds, he can definitely uh, make a run for. I mean, at least make a run for the podium in the upcoming season, especially since he's just entering his sophomore year. And we have two more teams here in the Big Ten, and that is Purdue and Iowa. Now, Purdue, I'm going to hit on first because we have Kendall Coleman, who's another top 10 ranked guy at 157 pounds. Now, he needs to be able to beat Deacon and Hydley and Carr if he wants to get to the very top. Of course, everybody 157 pounds is going to have to beat these guys to get to the very top. But Kendall Coleman is somebody who was 29 and 8 last season, so had a, a significant amount of wins under his belt. Made the Big Ten Finals with only lo- his loss at the Big Ten Championships coming to Ryan Deacon. Not a crazy loss, but I think here's kind of the key here with Coleman. He is somebody who made improvements last year, made a lot of improvements. Uh, he was majored by Deacon earlier on in the season, ended up losing him only 7-2 to two at the Big Ten Championships. He lost by fall to Caleb Young earlier on the season, and then ended up losing him 4-3 to three later on. So he's somebody who knows how to make those adjustments and uh, is better in some of those pressure-filled situations, as it seems. So I think that Kendall Coleman is somebody who is able to really make a name for himself in this upcoming season and even project upwards in the 157 pound weight class and at Iowa uh, speaking of another 157 pounder is Caleb Young now Iowa like I said with Penn State it was a difficult decision like who is a dark horse on Iowa when every single one of their guys is ranked and they get so much media attention that's why I decided on Caleb Young who is one of the lower ranked wrestlers at Iowa a number 10 in the country right now at 157 pounds and I think people are just counting him out after his Big Ten unfortunate performance 0-2 not a great Big Ten championships but he ended up having losses to Carr and Quincy Monday last year which kind of started pushing him out of people's minds which I think is kind of unfair look at some of the facts over the past couple of years he is an All-American he's somebody who has gone on the podium before he's also somebody who is beat Ryan Deacon twice, which not that many guys can say that at 157 pounds, but Caleb Young has can, has beat, uh, excuse me, Ryan Deacon twice in the past, although it wasn't last year, it was in previous seasons, and although they were close matches, he did pull out the victory two times, and because of that, I think Caleb Young is a dark horse that people are still overlooking, and now that we have all this out of the way, who do you think are some of your dark horses for the upcoming season, and as you see here, I have scrolling up the Fanco Wrestling channel members. Thank you to everybody who has joined as a channel member. If you are looking for more information, you can check out the video down below. And if you want to join as a Fanco Wrestling channel member to support this channel, you can check out this link right here.